when we pray right and when we begin to worship god right the the truth is that sometimes we actually receive things even from the realm of the spirit right and the truth is that just because of your mind right is not understanding that which god is saying it doesn't mean that you are not receiving anything hallelujah so you may be praying right you may be worshiping right and in the next two weeks for example you would see that god has brought you into a greater dimension mention of that level of grace you used to operate in hallelujah you see the truth is that the darkness right that god is sending us to is because of the ability he has placed upon us right to bring light that's why the scripture says that ye are the light of the world right a city set on a hill that cannot be hid hallelujah hallelujah So today, um, by God's grace, um, I trust God that God, you know, would be granting us light, right? There would be activations also in the spirit, right? And what the Lord actually is telling me now, right, is that he's actually giving someone here rest, rest, rest in the name of Jesus Christ. Absolute rest divine rest on all sides in the name of jesus the scripture says that for thou has increased my greatness and comforted me on all sides the lord is granting someone rest in the name of jesus christ i don't know it may be maritally it may be academically it may even be elsewise the lord grant you rest now in the name of jesus christ in jesus mighty name of prayed so just really to to you know go into um the teaching of today by god's grace we are not going to spend a a very long time right but i'll be teaching in line you know with the prophetic word right for this year glorious light glorious light across churches right and across even the body of christ right the truth is that there are those people who believe that prophetic words are not needed right so you would find some people who would even stretch it to say that prophetic words are nonsense you would find people like that right the truth also is that prophetic words right can become a ritual by a church it can even become a ritual right by it by a denomination for example that has no life in them right this teaching is very powerful so that you know when we go to our different churches we would actually know now the implication of prophetic words right for example the redeemed church they have their prophetic words right mfm they have prophetic words christ embassy you know koinonia and all ministries you find there hallelujah the truth is that prophetic words if you are not careful it can become a ritual by a church even by a denomination that has no power in there to access also the tools right for an effective kingdom life you do not really need you know um um prophetic words it has nothing to do with prophetic words the truth is that to access you know an effective kingdom life right it actually requires you being able to access the knowledge of the truth even through the grace that is in the knowledge of christ that's why the scripture will tell us to grow in grace right and even in the knowledge hallelujah so before really i delve into the topic for tonight right i would like to give us scriptural basis for prophetic word are there scriptural basis at all there are so many churches denominations that would bring out prophetic words right and they would give you know members right of, of the congregation and and what really is generally a scriptural basis hallelujah yes so the first thing i would like to give to us is that you know god actually remains a god of times and seasons hallelujah god remains a god of times and season i really want to give unto us understanding right so that when we see for example the prophetic word of the year being divine repositioning we will actually understand what i am talking about right god does not dwell in time right god dwells outside of time but he carved out this three-dimensional component called past present and future to help man to relate with him 
So everything God does is with respect, right? To time as far as it comes to man. Let's open to Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 22 to 23. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 to 23. You would understand what I am talking about, right? Because even the mercies of God, right, is actually associated to time. The scripture says that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. It says because his compassion fail not, it says they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. It is one scripture we should know and we should not forget. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Hallelujah. You see, God's working on earth. God's working in our lives, right? They subscribe to the law of time and season. The truth is that when God came to the earth, right? Jesus Christ was God incarnate in flesh, right? The, the scripture tells us that he first came even as a baby, not as an adult. The first adult that came, we saw what happened to him, right? That was Adam. He did not subscribe even to the law of times and season. And the scripture would say, and Jesus Christ increased in wisdom and stature, right? This is a function of time. Jesus Christ also at one point would say that I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day, right? This was Jesus Christ talking about time. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ also will still associate God, right? Will associate even the death of his human nature to time. In John 19, chapter 4 or so, Jesus Christ was talking to the Pharisees, right? And then he said that destroy this temple and in three days will I build it, right? And the Pharisees were surprised. They were like, what is this man saying? How will you say we should destroy this temple that took years to build? Hallelujah. So, prophetic words, right, they are platforms to know God's emphasis per time, right? What really is God saying at this time? God is not doing the same thing at all times. This is what I want us to know, right? That God actually has an emphasis per season. God has an emphasis per moment, right? What God said last year is not what God is saying this year. This is the reason why some people actually are edged out of the relevance even of God. Hallelujah. What really is God saying per time? So, scriptural basis for prophetic words is what I'm really giving out to us tonight. So, you see, this helps us to know also prophetic words. It helps us to know what to do in such times, right? Because the truth is that it is not just enough to know the words, right? But the knowledge of those things God is doing within a season should actually give you also the understanding of what to do. Hallelujah. There are people who actually have knowledge without understanding. Trust me. There are so many people who know things. I'm sure when we were in primary school, right, we would actually see people like that. They have the ability to cram, right, but bring another kind of question before them. They won't be able to solve it. Hallelujah. The knowledge of this actually will grant unto us understanding. Hallelujah. And lastly, you know, prophetic words gives an insight also to the blessings that come with discernment and alignment. Hallelujah. With discernment and alignment. So the truth is that when you open your heart to prophetic words, right? For example, like the glorious light, right? Once you open your heart and you accept it, the truth is that there is something God is going to do, even in that season, right? That you yourself would become a partaker of. Hallelujah. So, prophetic words reveal that there is something God is doing within a season, right? Because God is the God of times and seasons, right? Also, prophetic word helps us to seek to know God's emphasis and the required partnership within this moment. Hallelujah. You see, the truth is that one of the ways God anoints men 
right, is when we are able to discern what God is doing within a season, right, that it is possible to have the anointing that comes upon you as a believer. Hope you know that believers also are anointed, right? It is possible for you to have an an anointing that comes upon you by reason of the office you operate. So you can operate as a minister. So the truth is that in order to actually carry you know this special anointing it will require you to know and to be greatly featured in what god really is doing right to be involved even in god's program part time so there is always a grace right for those people who through discernment right and alignment understand what god is doing per season praise the lord praise the lord so god has revealed you know by spirits that this is our year of glorious light this is our year of glorious light first scripture second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 let's let's if you can you know get your bios it will be very good also second corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 i will be reading from the nlt version it says Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't know this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Hallelujah. So the scripture here tells us that those who don't believe, right, are those who are unable to see even the glorious light is that true that as far as a man does not believe right he would not see even the reality of this glorious light that as far as you believe also right not allowing the devil to blind your minds you will see the glorious light hallelujah the truth is that one of the implication of the glorious light is understanding being bettered right because the scripture actually tells us still that same scripture it tells us that it is not enough to know it is not enough to to just have the knowledge of these things but it is very important that you understand also because you see wisdom right is the right application of knowledge the the before getting to the realm of wisdom right it requires you first having knowledge right and after having knowledge you must understand that which you know right and it is after understanding that which you know that you'll be able to apply that which you know rightly hope you know that the application of knowledge is not wisdom hallelujah the application of knowledge can be called craftiness it can be called manipulation have you seen people like that right they have different books for example that contains all sort of knowledge right and by reading it and applying it it necessarily doesn't mean that you are wise hallelujah the scripture reveals unto us the three dimensions of wisdom right it talks about the godly wisdom right it also talks about the demoniacal wisdom and the scripture also will talk about the sensual kind of wisdom that's why the scripture will tell us that true wisdom is an house built right and by understanding it is established and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all pleasant riches hallelujah so knowledge is tied to light understanding is tied to glorious light first peter chapter 2 verse 9 if you are with your bibles also open right first peter chapter 2 verse 9 the scripture says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light hallelujah the bible tells us that we've been called out of right into is that correct it says that we've been called out of into that we've been called out of darkness right into his marvelous light that's what the scripture tells us that 
that that light right that you've been called into is actually what makes you it is what makes each and every one of us a chosen generation right a royal priesthood a holy nation even a peculiar people you can see that light is so powerful hallelujah because there was a time Jesus Christ would actually talk to the Pharisees, right? And he would tell them that your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days, right? And he said that he truly saw it. Hallelujah. That Abraham himself rejoiced to see the one who had called us, right? Into his light from, from out of darkness. Hallelujah. Then the Jews actually would tell Jesus Christ that you are not yet 50 years old, right? And you say you have seen Abraham. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. Before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. So, when we talk about light in scripture, right, what really does it talk about? When we talk about light in scripture, what are we talking about? The truth is that light, right, as mentioned in different parts, chapters, verses of the scriptures, right, has always carried a positive connotation, an expression of grace and power and of God himself. Hallelujah. There are only few times in the Bible, right, where light is being connected to Satan, right, and those parts of the scripture actually reveals Right, the devil even as a deceiver. For example, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. Right, the scripture says, For Satan himself, right, transforms himself into an angel of light. Hallelujah. That the scripture makes us to know that Satan, right, was actually once the light bearer. Right, he was the son of the morning, he was the custodian of the mystery of the kingdom of God. Satan, right? He actually said, if this is all that makes God to be God, right? Then I also can be equal to God. Satan wanted a parallel government, even with God. And today, he's actually still trying to get a parallel government. But it is important, right, that we know that light in scripture is not really used, it was not really used for anything negative, right, but rather as a positive connotation. So when we talk about glorious light, you should stand up, jump and be happy, right, because of you know that the things that will come around your life this year would be positivity, it will be good news in the name of Jesus Christ. So the question is, what does light according to scripture represent? First, light represents insights into the truth of God's word. Hallelujah. Can you write this down? Light represents insights, right? Into the truth of God's word. The truth is that there are people who actually would carry God's word right without any insight hallelujah it may be that they lack light even in them right the scripture actually tells us about the, the learned, right, that there is actually a realm where the learned and the unlearned would actually submit to the feet of the great rabbi and say, Lord, teach me, right? The scripture says now the visions of all, right, was enclosed in a book that was sealed and this book that was sealed was being presented unto one who was learned and he said that, Lord, I cannot read this because of the book is sealed, right? And also this book was given to one who was unlearned and he said, Lord, I cannot read it because I am unlearned. So it means that your Bible, for example, you can open the scripture, the pages of the scripture, verses to verse, chapter to chapter, right? And then the books can still be sealed unto you. So light represents insight, it represents illumination, it represents revelation. Hallelujah. Paul the apostle would say in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, it says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know. Hallelujah. Did you see what Paul said there? He said that the eyes of your understanding being what? Being lightened 
that ye may know so already paul the apostle right through the spirit of god you know shows us the connectivity between light right and knowledge it says it says that when you are trying to talk about your eyes being enlightened that it will cost you to have knowledge the truth is that knowledge right in this kingdom in the kingdom of earth even in the kingdom of god is very important that if you are going to have dominion in this kingdom if you are going to have you know preservation in this kingdom if you are going to rule in this kingdom right it is predicated upon your knowledge that's why the scripture says prophet osia was the one who said it in osia 4 verse 6 right that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge and he says because ye have rejected knowledge right i shall reject you as being priest unto me so you see that the requirement also of being a priest right is that you become knowledgeable hallelujah you become knowledgeable today you see you know so many people respectfully speaking right they call themselves priests you understand without having a knowledge the knowledge of the word of god right you see so many people you know climb the altar the pulpit without a commitment really to the word of god the scripture says that for such kind of people right it says i will reject you hallelujah knowledge is very very important right the scripture it was david who would actually reveal to us right that ye shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes because they know not neither will they understand that we see that this thing called death right and this thing called a falling right downfall is predicated upon ignorance trust me that by god's grace you see when god says that it is our year of glorious light by spirit it is because he wants to grant us access to high level insights and high level spiritual illumination hallelujah that he will open us up by spirit to the deep things as far as the knowledge of the ways of god is concerned amen secondly when we talk about glorious light right light what do we mean glorious light means that god is going to be granting us understanding this year hallelujah and this is we you know even as a part of the body of christ right that the lord will grant unto us understanding that you know when we go to our various churches right that would actually have that leadership character in us that would have a deep understanding revelations of the word of god right we would grow in depth and would also grow in height that would be like the tribe of judah right who are like a tree that actually had their roots going downwards and their fruit bearing upwards hallelujah you see the truth is that i would like to emphasize this again there is a difference between knowledge and understanding you can find people who are so knowledgeable right the truth is that if you ask an average believer for example right that explain to me right how is jesus god right most people don't understand it right for example the scripture says you know the lord your god is one explain what what really is the difference between you know the oneness of god and you know god the father you know the son the spirit what what really is it can you explain this to me hallelujah the truth is that so many people have not even understood yet how to defend their faith when the scripture talks about the grace of god eternal life salvation hallelujah the eating wisdom of god the strong message of david what does the scripture mean consecration so knowledge right is the awareness of an information that brings to you the awareness of a possibility so knowledge will just bring to you the awareness right of a possibility so you can see people for example that will know that investment right is one of the keys to financial prosperity but that does not mean that they will actually have and possess financial prosperity right there are so many of us here we know that 
you know for you to be rich like wealthy to be in millions and billions you know of naira euros pounds dollars right it requires so many things including investments right but how many of us here have actually got into this realm trust me i trust god that god is bringing us to a level trust me right where each and every one of us we would all be great and we will know ourselves trust me i know what i'm talking about right that the lord will grant unto us height don't you know what the scripture says in second corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 the scripture says that now god you know will make all grace abound towards you that you may be sufficient in all things unto good works hallelujah understanding is a miracle trust me do you know that understanding is a powerful miracle jesus christ in scripture right he would actually you know open the understanding of people that they may understand scripture right philip for example would meet the ethiopian enoch right and he asked the ethiopian enoch understand it what thou readest right and he said how can i understand except a man teach me you see the truth is that there are people who advocate that you really you know need to know god for yourself hallelujah and the truth is that you see we i understand what they say when they say that you really need to know god for yourself right but the truth is this right if you know the structures that god has put in place for you to know him right you would actually balance that statement hallelujah you would balance it for example do you know that god has given us the holy spirit right to actually guide us jesus christ said and now when the spirit of truth right shall come that he shall guide you into all truth and some of the things right that jesus christ was going to teach the disciples would not understand it until paul the apostle would come right that the holy spirit will begin to reveal so many things through paul hallelujah god gave men also God gave men also, for example, the account of Philip, right? Philip and the Ethiopian Enoch. It required a man for the Ethiopian Enoch to know God, right? Also, God gave gifts to men. The scripture tells us, right, that God gave apostles, he gave prophets, he gave, you know, evangelists, pastors, teachers, right, for the work of the ministry to equip the saints also. So understanding, right, is very powerful understanding is very powerful the scripture will tell us about a man also right called apollos hallelujah this is the reason why we really need to you know by god's grace have understanding the truth is that so many of us we actually seek so many things some people it is prayer right some people it is to probably go to a man of god to seek you know prayers impartation and these things but the word of god here is telling us that understanding is very powerful the truth is that so many of us would actually shift to the next level of our lives right even through understanding the scripture tells us about apollos right he was fervent he was properly discipled right but the scripture says that he knew only right but there were two strange men in the congregation while he was preaching their names were aquila and priscilla right and the scripture would tell us that after he finished his crusade they called him aside and they expounded the way of god more perfectly unto him they expanded the way of god more perfectly unto him understanding is a gift understanding is a miracle i would like us to just decree and declare that i understand by the Spirit of god in the name of jesus the lord grants unto me understanding are we are we praying just declare upon your life lay your hands upon your head i receive understanding by the spirit of god are you praying i receive understanding supernatural understanding in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name of prayed in jesus mighty name of prayed job 32 verse 8 the scripture says but there is a spirit in man right the truth is that it is not your body 
right that actually grant you understanding the scripture says there is a spirit in man it means that for you to have understanding that level of understanding it will require a spiritual communication the spirit of god communicating with your spirit right it says there is an understanding right that can only be communicated in and through the spirit of man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding you see the truth is that in understanding how results consistent results are being produced right each and every one of us here please listen if you want to understand how to produce a result consistently it is important that you move from the realm of knowledge to the realm of understanding hallelujah just actually a technique you know by god's grace i finished with a perfect gpa during my undergraduate right and there was actually something i knew right it was it was not better on knowledge right it was not better on things that were taught in class hallelujah it is better from understanding there must be something that you know right for example the truth let me let me make this clear to us right for example to repair your car right if it stops on the road you may just open the bonnet and eat the battery right and it will work once right you have the knowledge probably you've seen someone do it before and when you try it again it won't work right until you get a mechanic until you get someone who really understands the same tools may be in your car for example right but because of you lack the knowledge of how to use those tools how to use those instruments right you may never get that result the truth is a lack of understanding right please listen to this lack of understanding can put you even though knowledgeable at the same level as an ignorant person hallelujah the scripture says the heir if he be a child right it different not even from a servant that if you lack understanding it can put you on the same level as someone who knows nothing at all because the one who knows right the one who doesn't know rather right and the one who is just aware will definitely have the same result that's the truth it is painful to know what should be right and not know how to make it manifest there are so many people who actually know that you know jesus heals right but how do i make this manifest there are ministers of the gospel for example they know that jesus saves right but how do i make this manifest there are ministers of the gospel for example who also know that jesus delivers but how do they make it manifest there are people who know that you know jesus christ has granted unto us riches glory right therefore i should move from this realm of poverty and financial struggle you have the knowledge of these things right these spiritual blessings are there but how do you transfer it from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the physical understanding understanding is a fortitude right to comprehend it is the ability to know how to apply knowledge in a way that profits hallelujah knowledge answers the question what but understanding answers the question how right most people they know what to do but they do not know how to do it and trust me i know that god you know would be granting us grace access into light on how to you know get into realms that of kingdom possibilities in the name of jesus christ mastery it only happens at the realm of understanding right that one of the ways to strive lawfully is true understanding because he that strives for mastery is not crowned except it strives lawfully hallelujah that it is possible that the rich and the poor can hold this same bible right in fact they can be attending the same church in fact they can be listening to the same man of god right but when the man of god may declare only five people may have that result right one with knowledge right and one without you know an understanding actually said amen hallelujah and he did not see the fruits 
even bearing. Hallelujah. The truth is that the scripture tells us that the difference between the fruit, right, that the seed that fell on the fertile ground, right, on the fertile soil, the difference in their outcome and produce, that one produced 30 folds, right, another 60, another 100, the difference was actually based on understanding, right? And the Lord is granting us understanding into light, what light represents. That this year, God will take away from us the realm of guessing, the realm of misunderstanding in the name of Jesus, that we will stand with confidence by the privilege of God's mercies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it is very important that we understand that we become like organizations and industries, for example, like Coca-Cola, for example, right? They've so standardized their result that irrespective who handles the production, right? It is the same Coke. It is the same taste, the exact same product, the quality that is always being produced. That is better from understanding. It is because they know what to do. May you know what to do in the name of Jesus. May you understand also how to do it in the name of Jesus. So, you actually know you've gained understanding, right? When it no longer becomes luck, right? When you can produce a result indefinitely, you know you've got into the realm of understanding. Hallelujah. Number three, glorious light means access to supernatural direction. Hallelujah. It means access to supernatural direction. My God, I doubt, you know, we'll be able to finish the, the teaching for tonight. We may continue next week, right, by God's grace, um, because we would have to end very soon, right? But number three, glorious light, light in itself, it means access to supernatural direction. Hallelujah. Direction is very powerful. The scripture says in Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, right? And a light unto my path. Direction is very powerful. It is very powerful. It is very powerful. Psalm 43 verse 3 also, it says, Oh, send out thy light. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto, unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacle. Hallelujah. Please, let me tell us something, right? The truth is that in the days we are in, right? The, the truth is that darkness, right, from afar may look like light. And it will require you having a high level of light to discern between light and to discern between darkness. Hallelujah. That's the truth. We must actually trust God for the grace to, to be filled with sufficient light. With sufficient light. John chapter 11 verse 9 to 10. A lot of scripture. And you see the reason why I like to give scripture a lot, right? Is because I really like the faith of God's people to be built on the word of God and not the opinion, the mentality of men. John 11, 9 to 10. It says, Jesus answered, A dear not of hours in the day. If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not. Do you see that? Because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. There is no light in him. Let me tell you, right, the truth is that the world we live in is dark. Very dark and painfully dark. Hallelujah. We hear of killings all around, right? The recent killing, for example, sadly, in Plateau, Nigeria, right? We hear of all sort of, you know, happenings, unbelievable things. Hallelujah. You hear, there are certain things, right, that you would see people do 
that you know that these ones are not pure humans hallelujah we we treated the topic i think last year which is the mystery of the serpent seed right that there's a level of wickedness you see men operate in that you know that this one is not a man we know the seed where this one came from the seed of the serpent the world is very dark right there is a lot of wickedness spiritually physically right people there are people who laugh with you right at your front and behind you they are there stabbing you right the scripture tells us this is not you know um something i try the scripture tells us itself that darkness shall cover the earth right and gross darkness the people but hallelujah this is what the word of god says it says that the glory of the lord shall arise upon us glorious light it means access to direction by the word of god telling you what to do right telling you how to do these things and how to produce these results in your lives hallelujah light is very powerful it is very very powerful i would like us just in one minute to pray in the spirit i would like us in one minute to pray in the spirit if we can that father lord grant me light in the name of jesus in one minute in one minute i would like us to pray father lord grant me light in the name of jesus are you praying from from the understanding of these things i want you to pray father grant me light light me up oh god like menorah father lord light me up father lord grant me light in the name of jesus are you praying are you praying people of god direction is granted unto me insight illumination is granted unto me in the name of jesus understanding is better in the name of jesus in jesus mighty and excellent name of prayed. you see the truth is that the language right god communicates to the saints right is not in english the language god communicates to the saints is not in yoruba it is not in spanish greek or Igbo. right the language of god is actually his light <sighs> glorious light number four definition glorious light or light right means access to life these things i'm teaching you right they are kingdom truths right and they are also theological frameworks right of what light represents right that if someone for example meets you and say what's the meaning of light you can tell them sit down right let me teach you what the light of god represents right number one the light of god represents insight it represents illumination right number two the light of god represents understanding not everybody who have knowledge actually are granted understanding hallelujah number three the light of god actually means access to direction number four glorious light means access to life can you write that down glorious light means access to life john chapter 1 verse 4 see what the scripture says so what the scripture says it says in him was life and the life was the light of man very powerful and so the scripture actually reveals to us right a relationship between light and life that this year by god's grace we would be examining you know very deep mysteries of the kingdom trust me right this year would be examining also the concept of life we would go in depthly and dissect this in the lord will grant unto us understanding that when the scripture says in romans chapter 8 verse 11 right that um if the same spirit that raised up christ from the dead dwells in you he that raised up jesus from the dead right shall also quicken your mortal bodies by spirits that dwelleth in you the scripture actually you know teaches us something very deep there that there is an administration of the life of god right through the spirits 
even of the living God. There's a kind of life God has given you, right? There's a kind of life God has given unto us, right? The truth is that so many people, right? All of us here, we have the life of God, right? And we must trust God for the grace to operate, right? To actually exercise the authority through that life. Hallelujah. The truth is that so many of us, the power of God inside of us, right? We've just made it to be potential. Hallelujah. You need to make the energy of God, the life of the Spirit in you to be kinetic. Hallelujah. The truth is that people who actually perform signs, wonders, right? The scripture tells us that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name, right? In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall drink poisons, right? It says that they shall... All these things, they are not for special people. Hallelujah. It is not for pastors. It is not for the pastors in your church. Hallelujah. It is also for you. Hallelujah. These are actually allocations for the believer in Christ. That the next time you go to your church, right? You would actually need that sick brother or that sick sister to go to the pastor. You will just tell them, come, let me pray for you hallelujah the truth is that the reason why so many believers are not doing mighty things in the kingdom today right is because of fear they do not actually think that they can actually do so many mighty things that they actually see mighty men of god do hallelujah that there is a possibility right that you can actually bring activations in the spirit there is a possibility that you yourself can cast out demons there is a possibility that you yourself can actually heal people who are sick these things are possibilities please believe me right that the next time they call you right Oyi Damola, for example, Sister Oyi or Brother Chekube, come and lead prayers, right? Or Sister Moyo, come and lead prayers. You don't just come from a place, right, of an authority above you who has given you assignment, right? You come from a place of consciousness. You must be very conscious in the spirit. You must know that the life of God resides in you. Hallelujah. You must know these things. You must know these things. The scripture says we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. It did not say that that prophet is seated in Christ in heavenly places, right? It did not say that that minister, it says ye are. As far as you become a spiritual partaker of the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Christ. It says that you are seated with him in heavenly places, far above thrones, powers, principalities dominions there's a kind of life god has given unto you right that when the spirit of god indwells in a believer there is something it does to your spirit there is something the the spirit of god can do in your spirit and the truth is this right we are still in the process of maximizing you know that's which the spirit of god can do right we are still in the process of unraveling these things and you know maximizing and entering this thing into its fullest right there was a man a very strange man one of god's generals right his name was john g lake you know this man there was a pandemic during his time in spooky and what happened while well, the pandemic was killing everybody slaying everybody this man actually stood without anything happening to him he would touch the virus and nothing still will happen to him the life of god that from today you begin to believe that thing they call sickness that medical diagnosis right that the doctor has called for example to be cancer to be malaria to be fever to be whatsoever it lives now in the name of jesus hallelujah the spirit of god the life of god there are people who are not born again right but they have tapped into the potential right of the human body they've tapped into the realm of the spirit the lord himself would be granting us access into his light because you see light is very powerful right science knows that there is a relationship between light 
that there is a relationship between radiation, right, as light. There is a relationship between it, health, and life, right? That there are certain kinds of diseases you want to treat, for example, right? For example, like cancer, and the kind of treatment method will be through radiation, right? Or to sterilize surfaces or samples, right? You would need the UV light. Light is very powerful. It is associated even with life. That there's something you will know, right? That the life of God will actually work in you. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, it says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, by every light, that you won't live by the word of God alone, right? And so what the scripture says, in Psalm 119 verse 130, it says, The entrance of thy word, right? Give it light, it give it understanding unto the simple, that if the entrance of the word is going to give light, right then it means that man shall not live by bread but we shall live also by light the entrance of food right it's given vitamins it's given carbohydrates proteins it's given minerals but if you eat beans right you would actually know that what you'll be getting from it is maybe carbohydrates or protein is that right but when you eat scriptures what truly happens what do you get when you eat scriptures the scripture tells us that both of them can do something to you that you can get light romans chapter 8 verse 11 if the same spirit that raised up christ from the dead dwells in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by spirit that dwelleth in you hallelujah that that same spirit can quicken your mortal bodies we must know this right and you have to believe this because these are the signs that will follow you if you believe it hallelujah i would like us to declare this over ourselves say by light i decree and declare longevity and abundance in the name of jesus by light are you praying i decree and declare longevity and abundance upon my life in the name of jesus by light i decree and declare i decree and declare life longevity abundance in the name of jesus are you praying are you praying tonight? Are you praying? By light I decree and declare. 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 Rakom by Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost by light. By light I decree and declare. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. One of the prayers we'll be praying now, right? I just saw this now in the realm of the spirit. We'll be praying against death. We'll be praying against death. The scripture says, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? I don't know. I just saw the spirit of death and would come against it. You would decree and declare that I, my family, my loved ones shall not die, but we shall live in the name of Jesus. Are we praying? I shall not die, but I shall live to see the goodness of the Lord. Are you praying, people of God? I shall not die in the name of Jesus. I shall not die in the name of Jesus. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? Are you praying? Rasombre Peshebekatai. Rapande Veshtabekatai. Not the arrow that flies by day, not the pestilence that destructed in noonday. In the name of Jesus. No enchantment, no wickedness. In the name of Jesus. I am exalted above powers. I am exalted above principalities. I am exalted above the hill speakings of darkness. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name of prayed. In Jesus mighty name of prayed. This will be the last point for tonight, right? Because we have to just, you know, keep to time. Also, you see, the truth is that this is my um, 
concerned with time, right? I can stay for hours sharing the word of God, right? Because this is actually, you know, the way you can sit down, right? And begin to eat food. For example, you wake up in the morning before you go to school or before you go to work and eat food and then see another food and eat it is the way, you know, I love the word of God also. And we also, yeah, must love the word of God this year in the name of Jesus. The truth is this, right? Light is directly proportionate to life, right? I have prayed for people with both, you know, physical and spiritual attacks, right? And the truth is that there are things that you don't try without this light that translates to life. Hallelujah. There was a woman I prayed for with an attack on her leg, right? This was a spiritual attack, right? And I began to pray because then I was really learning. I was like, God, you know, I really want to practicalize your glory. And she visited, you know, us in our house. And I began to pray, pray on her leg, right? And by God's grace now, we we can say all glory to God. There are certain things that you do not do, right? With this light that translates to life. Hallelujah. You must have the word of God rich in you. The scripture says that if you have my word in you, right, that you shall call upon me and I will answer you. That's what the word of God says. That by reason of having light in you, but if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, right, dwells in you, it shall also quicken your mortal bodies even by spirits. There are people who may be afraid right now, right, of what I am saying hallelujah hallelujah okay the truth is that there are people who will be afraid of what i'm saying right there are people who are even here right who will be afraid to be involved in such kind of spiritual warfare right because they are afraid of being victims hallelujah the truth is this you should not you practice if you want to practicalize it don't worry practicalize your authority in christ hallelujah i was listening to apostle selman the other day right and he was sharing the story of e a jimmy and you know all his other friends at the time when they were on campus right how they were practicalizing the power of god they said that then that they would lay hands right on people and that people then would be slain by the spirit of god and a jimmy it was a problem right he wasn't seeing anything he wasn't seeing the power of god made manifest hallelujah but he said that the day he continued in this thing right the scriptures says people who by reason of use right exercising your spiritual senses that someone would say i am sick say no problem come let me pray for you hallelujah if the person doesn't get ill don't beat yourself up right you, you are in the school of the spirit you are training right to be that god's battle ask hallelujah these things are very powerful there are people who will be afraid to be involved in this kind of things, right? These things don't just come into your lives, right? They are conditions that make them to happen. When Jesus Christ, you know, you know, was going to knock into the door of our hearts, right? He actually came in by permission. Hallelujah. There are people who believe, for example, that if I should pray for this woman, with, I'm telling you my mentality. If I pray for this woman with this spiritual attack, right, that this may come to me. Hallelujah. Now, number one, the scripture says that we are seated above. Hallelujah. Above. We are seated with Christ in that place of authority. Hallelujah. That nothing can enter into your life without permission that if jesus knocked right on my heart to enter why should something without knocking enter hallelujah so barrenness why should barrenness remain right why should for example you know health complications remain why should fibroid remain hallelujah i would like us to pray if if there's anything that does not represent god in your life i would like you to begin to speak now i would like you to begin to speak now from the understanding of this thing that light represents life are you praying 
if there is anything that does not represent God, my health, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? My career, oh God, in the name of Jesus. My finance, oh God, are you praying? Shapakatai, include your family members also. If there is a Shakopakatai, repent the verse, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that health conditions are settled now in the name of Jesus. Cancer are settled now in the name of Jesus. Sicknesses are settled now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is replacing, hallelujah. I don't know, is, is there anyone here? Right, you have someone who is close, and the person has been trusting God for the fruits of the womb, right? But this is a word for that person. Go be courageous, tell the person that God is remembering them according to the time of life. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I join my faith with every of you saints here. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that anyone who is experiencing barrenness shall be remembered now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare barrenness of finances lives now in the name of Jesus. Barrenness of children lives now in the name of Jesus. Barrenness of purpose lives now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord also reveals to me, I don't know who is that, right? But they are close people, right? The Lord, I'm just saying something like, you know, um, stones in the uterus kind of like fibroid i decree and declare hallelujah. is there anyone here like that someone close to you hallelujah the lord says that he's removing that thing now in the name of jesus christ every tomorrow growth that anyone is experiencing lives now in the name of jesus christ the lord also is telling me that he's granting someone here peace peace that's all that person just needs father lord peace the lord is granting you peace by all ways the lord is granting you peace by all means in the name of jesus the lord also is revealing to me that there is someone here i don't know who that person is right before this year started even when this year started you sat down and you wrote your goals right you wrote your goals maritally you wrote your goals about your finance you wrote your goals even about things that pertain to your life and destiny i pray this is what the word of the lord says right that it is in a heart man right it is in the heart of a man rather to plan but the lord is the one who brings about the establishment of these things i decree and declare that by the mercy of the God of David that the Lord answers you now in the name of Jesus the word of the Lord says that ye shall decide and decree a thing and the Lord shall bring about the establishment of the same and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways in the name of Jesus the truth is that there are people that Satan does not want pain for them right he wants them to just die hallelujah that's the truth there are people like that satan does not want pain he just wants death that if this person can die you know the truth is this if you are experiencing any sort of attack in your life right it is because there is something glorious upon your life trust me there is something glorious if you are finding for example you having any challenge right it may be challenge of purpose it may be the challenge of your career it may be financial challenge things seem as though they are hard for you it is because you carry a glorious destiny and please listen to me right the truth is that light right is actually darkness is the seed for light hallelujah you should not give up keep pressing keep pressing keep pressing there are people like that keep pressing keep pressing the scripture says that for the devil cometh not right but to steal to kill and to destroy so it means that the moment you start seeing things looking like stealing like killing and like destruction right in your life it is because you have something there right and the devil is coming for it so you should know that you are so glorious and the lord has placed a glorious virtue upon your life so the devil right there are people like that that is looking for that if it requires death right it will just kill them 
Hallelujah. Because the truth is that he just wants those people to die, right? Because even if they are in pains, it is still a disadvantage to him. He knows that even in their pains, they can still do mighty things, right? For the kingdom through the spirit of God. Some of you, right? And I'm speaking now, I'm sure some of you may be afraid of me. You may just be saying, Ben, please take it easy. Oh. Please don't talk like this or we still love you. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, the life of God is at work in me. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Lift up your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, the life of God is at work in me. Are you praying, people of God? The life of God is at work in me. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Shako prepeke seven de pekati akoi rambaka sevre pekate pai. Are you praying? The life of God is at work. The life of God is at work in me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name of prayed. In Jesus' mighty name of prayed. You see, we are going to pray shortly, right? But the truth is that when we get to heaven, right? Most of us here. We will actually know the things that we've eaten in this life the things you've enjoyed that are supposed to kill us right we would actually see those things did the scripture not say in mark chapter 16 verse 18 right it says they shall take up serpents and it says if you shall believe right even in my name you you will drink poisons you will drink deadly things right but it shall not hurt you Romans chapter 8 verse 11 if that same spirit right that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by spirit that dwelleth in you so don't take the risk right of living in this evil world like this without knowing these things it is a big risk listen to me it is R I S K it is a risk it will cost you more than you can imagine. Jesus Christ said, no man had the power to take this life from me. Hallelujah. We must walk according to our pattern man. That no man, nothing on this earth, no spirit, no power, no principality, had the power to take this life from me. I have the power to lay it down. The truth is that, listen to me people of God, the part of scripture, you believe right is the part that works for you hallelujah so i was discussing with one of my brothers right recently you know he's here currently right and then we're discussing and he said that when talking about revelational knowledge if you begin to doubt right and downplay the revelational knowledge of a person you know it can be so detrimental to you that if you do not believe that word it won't work for you but the part of scripture that you believe is that part that works for you see in interpreting scriptures there are two ways in interpreting scripture number one we must know that the scripture is a book of literature right so you can read the scripture right and get literal meanings from it and if you do not understand it you would actually utilize what the scripture calls two or three witnesses hallelujah the scripture says in two or three witnesses the truth is established is that true and the truth is that if then you actually need to get an in-depth meaning to it right you would actually require the wisdom of the spirit right to get prophetic and revelational knowledge even from the scripture hallelujah so many theologians would say that this is a wrong interpretation for example of scripture hallelujah but the truth is we must understand that the word of god also is a prophetic book the scripture says that this word right that the word of god is a sure much more word of prophecy very powerful the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you that is why your laziness to read the scripture right is you agreeing with death among many other things because through light you actually gain life remember through light you actually gain life through light you actually gain life that you begin to decree and declare the word of god upon your life right when we for example you know are being 
ask to, to, to speak the confession, you speak it. These things are the life, life, you know, are representations rather of the life of God. This is the light of God. The scripture says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There is the light that produces life. Just few prayers before, you know, we round up today, right? The first prayer, say, in the name of Jesus, the life of God is that work in me. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? The life of God is that work in me. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? The life of God is that work in me. Are you praying, people of God? The life of God is at work in me. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Are you praying? In the name of Jesus. The life of God is at work in me. In Jesus' mighty name of prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. 